Oh, wow.
I'd never really campaigned to be in a movie until Drive. I had seen a movie called Bronson, and, uh, and then Bronson made me go back and watch the Pusher Trilogy, which is Reffin's earlier work, in, in, um, which was supposed to be one movie, and the first movie was so whack that they made a second and a third, and it became a trilogy. If you haven't seen those, you really should. The Pusher 3 with Slatkow Burek as the lead. One of the great, great films ever made. And so um, I hear that Refn is, is getting ready to make his very first movie in America and that Gosling has already signed on. And I called my people and I said, I'm, the word was lobbying, the word I was searching for. I, I, you know, I said, I, I, want, I, want, I want to do everything in my power to at least get a meeting with Refn. And I've never done this before. Then I hear that there's a character in there that's a Jewish guy from New York who thinks the way to really be tough is to, to be Italian. So he completely changes his name to Nino, and even though his name is Arnie, you know, and he opens a pizza place, and, you know, he starts talking like these damn those, you know. Huh. And that was me. I was a Jewish kid in New York who, like, said, nah, man, the only way I'm going to get any street credits if I'm, like, you know, like a made guy, you know. And uh, I fashioned myself as, as an Italian my whole childhood. And I finally got Refn to accept a phone call of mine. And I, I, he said, why do you, he really want to be in the movie, why? And I said to him, because I'm Nino. I'm a Jewish guy from New York who, 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 who always pretended to be Italian. So we met and uh, we, have a long, we had a long meeting. I could take up the entire rest of the panel on this answer. <laughs> well, I'm going to watch it within the week, if not tonight. You don't even want to hear the rest of the thing. Like, have you I been, do. Have you been bored? You, you're the Everybody one else. guy who, in the audience. Everybody like, this is my favorite, my favorite movie. All right, stop already, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere I go, everywhere. My, the only reason I'm here is because my wife said, get the fuck out of the house. <laughs> You know uh, the the heavy thing on your left when you're playing as Hellboy. Was it heavy to like to like pick when you're like moving around with your arms with that like left thing that you had on your left? Like it was it looked pretty heavy. What thing on my left? On Hellboy, yeah, you were playing as um, the Dread Demon. Yeah. Yeah. What was on my left? I think it was like a, like a my 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 right hand was was made out of granite. That was the right hand of doom. That was the heavy, that was the heavy thing. On my left, I had my gun, my condoms, my gum. My cigars, my lighter. I was ready, I was ready for it. <laughs> what's your name, what's your question? Hi, my name is Heather. And first of all, Ron, I like you in a lot of movies, like Kronos, I loved um, City of the Lost Children. And Charlie, I really liked you in Crimson Peak. So, this is a question for both of you. Is there something that you would like to see become a film or a show, and what role would you like to play in making that project? Me? Both of you. You know, I had a real heartbreak. One of my favorite novels was uh, Shantaram, and Woo! I got to, uh, I lobbied for the, um, for the rights, and um, got outbid for them. Uh, somebody bought them for way more money than I could offer, but the author was um, really blown away by mine and my partner, Eric Warren Singer's creative take on it. And uh, Apple ended up getting the, the rights and we, we went and campaigned for, you know, for the job and they hired us, but we only got to do one season of the show and that was like the biggest heartbreak I've had in my career because we only got to tell a quarter of the story. So if I could tell any story in the world, I'd tell the rest of that story that we started. And then Apple fucked us. <laughs> I have a lot that sounds of familiar, uh, un unfinished projects as well. Um, I did two seasons of a show called Hand of God, which I thought was uh, didn't look like any other show I'd ever seen before or, or or experienced before, and uh, the network agreed. 
I said, we don't know what this is. We're taking you off the air, but we still had a tremendous amount more story to tell. And then there was a second show that followed that called Startup, which uh, also, we, we never got canceled. You know, we, we were ready to do the next season, and the network we were working for was so fucked up, they, they forgot to even cancel us. They just, just they're still walking around like, hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> You're running a network, man. <laughs> Have some balls. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I have a, a little something that I would like to uh, share with all of you. Um, we have a couple of guests here today that uh, might be near and dear to uh, this city. Um, their names are uh, Trey Filter and Paul Contreras. They're going to come out and join us. These were the two guys that took down the shooter at the Chiefs Parade. Charlie and I are obsessed with heroism because I think the reason why we become actors is because we try to get right in our storytelling stuff that we definitely can't get right in real life. I'll never be a real true hero, but I love, so I, I pretend to, to be one by playing them. But what fascinates me is that I, I'm sitting next to, and if I get through this without breaking down and crying, I'll, you know, somebody's going to have to take over, but um, I'm sitting next to two guys who um, did something that we all hope if we're in a situation like that, that's what we choose to do, and they did it. And they did it so quickly and so without thinking. They both had their kids there. They both had their little kids there, and they still took this motherfucker down. getting to know them over the last couple of days, they both got in their cars before anybody knew it happened and were out. They didn't want thank yous, they didn't want acknowledge. Now they're stuck being celebrities, now they're stuck <laughs> having to sit on a fucking couch with idiots like me, like going, <laughs> They didn't ask for any of that, they didn't want any of that, but I feel as though when, when, when human beings sacrifice themselves without a, a, a batting of an eyelash, because it's the right thing to do, it's, it's all too rare, and, it all, it, it, and it's, all, it's all so extraordinary, because self-sacrifice is the true definition of heroism. When you're willing to put your own safety at risk for the greater good, that's the true definition of heroism. So I feel as though... I owe them a great uh, debt, and I just wanted you guys to meet them. And I'll start off by asking both of you, like, in that moment when you realized that, you know, it wasn't, what did you th think it was first, the noise? The noise you heard was... We, we at first, at least I did, assumed it was... 